In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this iMac T3 and upgrading its RAM to one gigabyte and also replacing its DVD drive with a new one. But before we get started, I'm just going to point out that I have a Patreon and if you wish to support it, there's a link in the description. Okay, so as you can see, this is an iMac T3. I found this on Craigslist and while it works, the DVD drive does not. I was putting a CD in it and it was making weird noises and having a whole lot of trouble loading the disc and I kind of pushed the disc in and then loaded it and then didn't read it and now I won't even eject it. So I reached out on Reddit to see if anyone could help me and a generous user sent me a Apple DVD drive. I think this came out of a G4 cube but should be compatible with this. This is, I think, an Atapi connector, and inside here, on the drive that exists, is an Atapi adapter connected to IDE. So, if I open this up and take the drive out, take the old adapter off, put it on this drive, it should work. I hope this is the same size to fit in there. It looks like it should be. I mean, this is a slot loading drive, just like this one. So, I guess we're going to take this apart and see if we can get this to fit in there. Okay, so I don't entirely know how to take this apart, so I'm just gonna go and see what happens. It looks like under here is, it looks like a VGA port. So I guess you can actually connect this to a monitor, which does mean I can actually record capture from this, so that should be interesting. I see a screw here, 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 and here. You also see one here and here. So I'm assuming I'm going to have to take those off, but before that, let's open up this other door, which I know houses the RAM. I'll take out the existing RAM. This looks to be... Huh, I forget how much RAM this originally had in it, but that doesn't matter, because it will soon have a gigabyte of RAM. Um, let's see... I guess I'll take off the two screws here. And this one. Okay, I guess I'll take these ones off too. Man, this screw does not want to turn. There we go. One, two, three, three. Oof, these screws are tight. That one does not want to turn, but okay. I guess I don't actually need to take those out. That's good to know. There we go. Okay, so this is off. Maybe I don't need to take those two screws off. I'm not entirely sure how to take this apart. So let's see what else I can do. Looks like I probably need to take this shield off. It's two screws here, two screws here holding the shield on. If I take that off, I think I can expose the drives, which is what I need get off. Oh man. How am I gonna get these screws out? I don't want to have to take this whole like plastic thing off. Well, let's get these bottom ones off first, I guess. Then I'll worry about getting that screw. One. Two. And I do have a tool I can use for that. In my other toolbox, not my I fix it one, but my other one I have this thing. Very useful to reach in and grab that screw. And then let's get the other one here. Get most of the way out, grab it with this thing, and get it out. Okay, let's see if that's enough to get 
anywhere. Oh, no, there's another one here and there. There's two more screws holding this shield on. I did at least glance at a teardown of this beforehand, but it was for a slightly different model of iMac, so I don't think everything was in the exact same spot. So I am mostly just going at this blind and just sort of guessing how to take it apart. Alright. Okay. That worked better than I thought. Let's get this out. Um, yeah, I do need to take the plastic out. Nope. Okay. That comes out. Good. Okay. So now I have access to the hard drive and the CD-ROM drive is behind it. Let's unplug the power to the hard drive. Looks like the IDE cable goes from the hard drive to the CD drive to the motherboard. Let's connect it from the motherboard and see how to get this drive tray out. Looks like I don't really want to, have to take the whole thing like apart. I want to see if I can just get this out. See a screw on the side here and one here, but I, I can't get to that because this is in the way. There's got to be a way to get to this without taking like the entire thing apart. It's like the drive is right here. I need to just pull it out and put the new one in. Interestingly, I can see that the old CD-ROM drive is a bit thicker than this one. So hopefully I can actually mount this in there. I don't see that I can actually mount it in there. It's just, I know it was compatible because the connector is the same, but I don't know if this will physically fit in there. I might need to like somehow Jerry rig something to get this in there. All right, well, I'm going to pause the video and maybe actually look at the teardown now to see how to get this off, and I will get back to you. Okay, so I've looked at the teardown, and there's actually four screws down there. One, two, three, four. It's a little hard to see when it was sitting on its face, so let's see if I can get those out, and then this whole assembly with the CD-ROM drive and DVD drive should come out. Now, looking at this again, I do think that the CD-ROM drive that I have is not the correct one to fit in here. I was doing research and it said that the G4 Cube drive was compatible, so that's why I thought the one that I was donated would fit. Now, I think it will work because it's the same connector, though I just need to find a creative way to get it to actually stay inside the machine, since I don't know if it has the same mounting points as the existing drive does. Screw number three, here, yep. and one more, and hopefully I can just pull the drive assembly out and look at it. The wire for the speaker is in the way. Move that over. Alright, the last screw. Get that out. So I think I could just take this out. Very good. All right, well, that's what the Mac looks like now. I'm going to put this down and focus on the CD drive hard drive. Okay, now to figure out how to get the CD-ROM drive out of this carrier here. You can see underneath it is the hard drive, and it looks like if I just take these screws off on the side, It 
should be able to get the CD-ROM drive out. This one too. Let's try the other side now. Take off the screw. Got this one. And let's see if we can get the CD ROM drive out. I think it's all everything holding it in place. Yep, there we go. So here is our hard drive. It looks to be just a Western Digital drive. A lot of the times, these drive have these drives have Apple logos on them. It looks like this one doesn't. It's, this just looks to be a normal IDE hard drive. What is not normal, quote unquote, is the CD-ROM drive. This is in the Tappy 4X DVD drive. And on the back, this adapter board which converts the Tappy to IDE has two little screws on it, which now I might need my iFixit kit, because those have got some tiny Phillips screws in there. Let's get the adapter board off. So, there may be a way to open up this drive and fix it. Maybe it needs, just needs a new belt or something, but I'm not super comfortable doing that, and so I'm going to see if I can get that drive to work. So here's the adapter. This connects to the back of the drive, and then the cable connects here, and I guess power is also delivered through this cable as well. So now on this drive is this big metal bracket screwed on to the side. So I'm going to take that off, though looking at it, I know it's not going to fit on the other drive since that it's a slightly smaller drive, but let's just see if it has mounting bracket holes anyway, or some way to mount it, like, I can't 3D print something or, you know, get some metal fabricated to hold it in, but if I can get some, like, I don't know, duct tape or something to hold it in there, I think that would be acceptable, at least in my book. Anyway, for this far, let's keep going. And See what happens if this doesn't work, it doesn't work, and I have to somehow source another DVD drive. But it was hard to find this drive, like on eBay or something, I couldn't find this particular drive. So, and plus this was sent, this one was sent to me for free, so if it doesn't work, I guess I can always try to find another one somehow. But So, the new drive is on top, and you can see it's a lot thinner, a lot smaller. This is, like I said, a laptop drive compared to a desktop drive. But, I mean, I think it should still work other than the fact that I can't mount it properly. Probably. Let's see if the adapter even fits on here. The Tappy connector is in a different spot. And obviously the screws on this adapter won't line up properly, but see if it even fits on it. Is it upside down? Okay, so I guess this is actually not going to work as the adapter is on the drive, kind of like that. And that's not going to fit. Because this way it does not fit you can't probably fit that in because it's a little upside down, a little, a little weird. So I think I might still need to hunt around for a proper drive. It's 50 seconds. I want to see if this drive even worked. I'm assuming it does, but it was also just pulled out of a computer at random, so I guess it really is unknown if it works. So I guess the moral is that the iMac G3 cannot use Mac G4 cube drives. 
Uh, and that's unfortunate. So, if anyone knows what I can get, one of these drives. This is a model SR-8184-B. Please let me know. I think I found some online, but they were a little too expensive. I uh, don't really feel like paying too much, or I, I don't feel like paying more for a CD-ROM drive than I did for the whole computer. Though I guess it did happen with the iMac G4, I mean the entire Mac G4. Um, the monitor, I spent more on the new hinge for that monitor than I did on the whole machine itself, but I guess sometimes that, uh, that happens. So, I guess I'll at least put the new RAM in, put the machine back together without the broken CD drive, and boot it up and see what happens there. Okay, one thing about me is that I am super stubborn. So I took our, obviously, slightly too small drive, and I took one of the screws from the Atapi adapter, and I screwed it into the bracket. I wish I could get another screw in on this side, but it would need a super long screw to reach from here all the way over to here. I don't have that. But, at least with one screw seems to be in there, and put the other drive in. You can see that where the screw holes lined up, should be close enough to how it was mounted inside originally, so this may fit inside, so I guess the only problem is still that the adapter fits on not quite correctly, so where did I put the adapter? The adapter here it is. So I guess since it can't go this way, it has to go that way. Okay, yeah, I guess I can't actually get this in there, the adapter physically won't fit, because it... I guess I could put the drive in... I guess I could put the drive in upside down? I don't think that would be a good idea to... Okay, I guess even with how stubborn I am, I may actually have to give up here, because as much as the drive sort of physically fits in there, Without the adapter, it won't do anything, so I guess this is kind of pointless. That is unfortunate, but I guess that's how you learn. I will keep scouring eBay and other places for another one of these drives, unless someone knows another place I can get one, or if I can even try to fix this, I may try to open it up, but I really don't want to do that. I really don't feel comfortable opening up. CD-ROM drive and just trying to poke around at it to see what's wrong, so I will keep looking out for another one and I guess put the machine back together without a CD drive. Okay, so I put our iMac back together. Screwing the ESC shield back in was a little annoying and the two screws here that I said were hard to get out were a little hard to get back in, but so you can see here I've installed our new one gig of RAM. Like I said, I put this back together without the CD drive, but that shouldn't matter. I don't see why this won't boot without that. So, now that that is all put back together, let's get this thing powered on and see what happens. All right, we've got our iMac hooked up. We've got our keyboard, and unfortunately, I don't have the mouse that came with it. So I'm just using this other Apple mouse, and by unfortunately, I guess I mean fortunately, because this used the Huck mouse, which uh, I didn't like. So you, anyway, let's... I heard the CRT power on, it was our nice Apple sound, and let's see if it boots. Alright, looks like our screen has come to life, and... I know this machine does work, it might just take a while to boot up. It took a little bit, but as you can see, this is booting into Mac OS 9. The fact that it's booting means I put our hard drive back in correctly, and that it doesn't care that there's no CD-ROM drive. This is another machine I haven't actually wiped or anything, so I may need to wipe and reinstall it just to get rid of all the stuff that's on here, so maybe it would boot slightly faster, but it did boot, as you can see. So, let's, once it's fully booted, we can check to see how much RAM we have. 
tell this computer and built-in memory one gigabyte so officially this machine does not support one gig of RAM but that's just officially unofficially you just put a gig of RAM in and it works so now we have one gig of RAM those little messages you saw popping up were I have a program on here called USB Overdrive, which is yelling at me that I need to give it a serial number, but I'd be, surprised, I'd be surprised if I even could give it a serial number as I don't think this website or the program really exists anymore. USB Overdrive is just a program to allow me to use two-button USB mouse, two-button two USB mice on here. This is uh, obviously only one-button mouse, but if I were to plug in a two-button mouse, I could have the right button act as the right click button or in this case control click and the other thing that popped up was just yelling me that the clock is wrong since either the CMOS battery is dead or I just had this unplugged for too long or something and it doesn't know what time it is anyway I guess that's all for this video I guess I'm a little sad that I couldn't get the CD-ROM drive to work but I guess I'll just have to keep looking around to see if I could find another one. So, a quick update. Here we have the iMac G3 taken apart again, because after I filmed the video, I went on eBay just looking around again, and I managed to find a new DVD drive for it, the proper one this time. So, I've taken it apart again, and we're going to try to install this in it and see if it works. So, first thing we do is take this little bracket thing, which looks to have some sort of thermal pad on it or something for some reason. And we screw that to our new DVD drive. And then, we install that back into the hard drive gauge and put it all back together in the system. So, we line this up screws in okay with our little bracket here screw back on the drive next thing we take our Atapi IDE adapter from the old drive and put it onto this one also interestingly here you can maybe see that there's a switch there that says slave and master this is set to slave obviously because the hard drive is master which is interesting, I guess. I don't know why this hard drive, this CD drive drive would have that setting on it. I mean, I guess it's standard for drives to have a master or slave setting on it, but like, this is an Apple computer? Like, why would they ever need to change that? Or why would you ever need to change that? So, I find that interesting that it's included on the drive. But I guess maybe this drive is used in different setups with like multiple IDE channels, so it could be master on its own IDE channel, while the hard drive is on a different one, so. Anyway, the proper adapter screwed back on. We take this and the hard drive cage, and we slot this in there. There's two little tabs on the front that this little bracket needs to clip into. Yep. You see here, this little tab pop through. Then we put our screws back in to this. This one goes here. Let's put that in there. Oh, come on. Not. There we go. It's having trouble lining up the screw and the screw hole. But. There we go. Got it. So this is why you, um, if you're me, you always look at uh, eBay, like, all the time, because in the past I was looking at eBay for one of these drives and I just found nothing, like, I could find, like, a whole iMac, but I don't want to do that, we have an iMac, I'm not going to buy a whole another computer just to take the DVD drive out of it. So, I guess you just have to keep looking, and maybe one day you'll just come across 
thing you need. Alright, almost done screwing this drive back in. Alright, before we put it back in the case, let's stick on our little IDE cable here. The small one goes to the hard drive, and then this to the CD-ROM drive adapter, that, then the other one goes to the motherboard. This slots in this, let's put in the cable onto the board, and push that sucker in, plug our power cable back in, and then get our screws and screw the cage back into the case. As I showed before, there are four screws, one here, here, then two here, here. So, let's screw that back in real quick. Alright, everything almost put back together, we're gonna get to the bottom part and seal this back up. So, as much as I like this machine and how it's not too, too hard to work on, yeah, while putting this metal cage back on, I managed to drop one of the screws in, inside the case and uh, had to almost take like the whole like outer shell off just to get this stupid screw back. So, I got the screw, I put it back on, now I just never want to have to take this thing apart again, because I don't have to deal with that again. I don't have to drop a screw in here and try to find it again. That was not fun. So let's take the plastic bottom piece. And put it back on. Oh, some dirt here. We just clip on from the bottom of that. Go. And push back. On, put in, we take our big screws and screw the plastic shell back together. Why are these screws so hard to get in there? Okay. Like almost everything, just two more screws here and here, and we're all sealed back up again. And one more. Alrighty, let's flip this back over and get it powered up and see if our new DVD drive works. Alright, I decided to give the VGA output on the Mac a shot to see if that works. So let's power the machine on and see if we can record the screen. Oh, I'm getting a picture. Hmm. Alright, so it looks like, the, yep, looks like the VG output is working fine and it's just mirroring whatever is on the CRT. So, that's cool. I can, uh, so I can capture from this now. Well, now we just wait for it to boot up, and then I will try the CD drive. Alright, so we got the computer all booted up. Let's take a look at System Profiler and see what it says. Make sure our DVD drive is detected. Alright, so as you can see, this is a PowerPC G3, 400 megahertz, gig of RAM, that works. And, we see DVD drive right here. So that's good, that means it can see it. First off, before I put any real disc in, I'm just going to stick this in, it's just a blank CD, sort of a sacrificial disc in case something goes wrong. Okay, it took the disc. The other drive did not do that. When I stick the disc in the other CD drive that was in here, it just nothing happened. I pushed it in more and nothing happened, so I couldn't get it back out. It seemed to actually take the disc in. 
think it's spinning. I think it's working. I don't know what it'll do with a blank CD. Apparently it didn't like that, and it just sput the bank CD back out at me. Um, alright, let's go for broke and try an actual disc. This is StarCraft. This is an actual CD. This supports Mac as well as Windows. You moment of truth. See if it reads it. Oh, and StarCraft CD right there. Yay. So it looks like our new CD-ROM drive is working. I guess I could actually install StarCraft on here, but I'll do that later. Maybe I'll do a little video where I show off this and some of the other Macs I have and I can show off it playing StarCraft. I just wanted to make sure that the CD-ROM drive actually works. So on these machines, to eject the CD, you just drag the CD to the trash. Just like on modern Macs. And that should spit the disc back out at me. And it does. So I'm glad now. I'm glad I got this fixed. Anyway, I think that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.